and we are live all right hello terry how are you hi nicholas i'm fine thank you good thank you for coming on appreciate it uh terry gonzalez right yes all right got that right um terry is a revivalist and would you say kind of like the central valley is is the um, the area live in the yes. Yes, Central Valley, California, Central Valley, yes. And, um, you know, I, I was introduced to you by uh, Jim Lawrence. He kind of connected yeah. us and stuff. So we're, we're just getting to know each other here. And so I'm looking forward to talking to you. Thank you for coming on, Terry. Well, thank you for um, having me on. It's, a, it's an honor. Thank you. Awesome. Well, um, give us a little introduction. What, what is... Terry doing right now? I know we talked a little bit and I want to hear it again. Like what's been going on at, at the house? <laughs> oh my, oh my. Well, you know, um, you know, with all, the, with everybody quarantined and yeah. not really having to, uh, you know, do anything, they're kind of like, uh, I actually see them getting hungrier, you know, and I'm talking about the believers, you know, okay. Um, especially ministers, they're like, uh, we don't know what to do. We don't, you know, we're trying to go, we're trying to abide by the, lo the laws of California, uh, you know, what we're supposed to do and such. But, you know, I believe that, that this right here, what we're going through right now is I myself think that, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it's the government and this, this and that, but I truly believe it. it this is God. Yeah. And the reason why I'm saying this, because for how long has God said, I want you to take me outside the four walls, right? Awesome, yeah, yep. And that's exactly what he's doing. I mean, we have no choice but go outside the four walls now. <laughs> and to me, that is like, that's amazing because, um, you know, I actually um, became born again back in 1990, um, 1999, so it's been uh, almost a little over 20 years. Okay. And God actually, uh, the, I had an encounter uh, with the Lord. I didn't actually go into a, um, I'm just going to just a real quick background real fast. No, you're good. Whatever. Um, I didn't actually get like, uh, uh, what do you call it, altar call salvation kind of a thing, you know, where <laughs> um, people normally do <laughs> get saved. No, um, I was in the middle of service at a church that I was attending because I, I do, I live here in Madeira, but I really, I mean, my region is outside of Madeira. And I have, as for well, why, I don't know, but that, that's where God <laughs> has me. But so, um, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't get baptized the traditional, I mean, um, uh, ultra call the traditional way. Uh, I actually had an encounter uh, with God back on May 16th, 1999, as uh, during worship. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, sit, I'm in church and I've got my hands raised and, you know, Nicholas, I started to hear this sound and it, even the sound was even um, came through the worship. That's how loud it got. Yeah. So it, I started to look up like toward the ceiling thinking, where is this sound coming from? This is unusual. I'm getting, and it sounded actually now that I recollect, it sounds like a, like a shofar. Okay. Um, so then it came and it came closer and closer to me. And before I know it, I was actually, um, my spirit man came out of my body. My body hit the floor and it was sort of like, I, I guess you would say like Paul with his Damascus road experience that he had, uh, because I was actually taken up into heaven and I was standing before a God that was so glorious, um, that, uh, that's so transformed my life. And I tell everybody, once you get translated into heaven, your life is never the same again. Church is never the same again. I, you know, even as of today, it's still hard for me to find a church that I feel like I'm supposed to be in because it, it'll ruin you. It'll totally ruin you. They say revival ruins a person. Go to heaven. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if that happened to you, translated believe me you're just erect yes. erect for the rest of your life yeah. um so anyway that's what happened i don't know how long i was up there but i know that when i came back to myself uh i was totally transformed in a nanosecond i was not the same anymore in fact that uh morning uh, in fact i was supposed to get baptized that afternoon 
Uh, and I, I had actually signed up for water baptism like about a month prior to this happening, not even realizing and knowing that this was going to happen because I still wasn't saved. And I'm thinking, well, I'll probably get saved between, you know, now and then. <laughs> but God did it. No man came to me and laid hands on me or prayed for me. No, God did it himself. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I go home after this, this happened to me. And I'm telling you, um, when that happens, you are so, when you go into the presence of God, you, I, I can't even explain. I, I think I probably cried and um, was not myself for at, for at least three weeks. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't function. Everything was like different. Um, I was just, I couldn't come, I could not come to myself. It was like very, very hard, but eventually it did. But to go back to that day, I, I, I was water baptized uh, in that afternoon. Oh, and one of the things I left out was when I got home, my husband saw me walk in the back door where he was in the back room. He looked at me and the words that came out of his mouth were, who are you and where's my wife? Because totally I was not the same anymore. Yeah. Not the same. And um, so that afternoon I went into water baptism. I was gonna be water baptized. It was like four, 14 or 15 of us. Two pastors baptized me. One was a younger one. The other one was like in his 80s. The 80-year-old one recognized exactly what had happened to me. And he looked at me and said, something has happened to you. The fire of God is all over you. And we are keeping you for last. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what happened to me either, but I'm here. So I got baptized and someone had taken a picture. And sure enough, there's like this huge ball of fire on my right side. And uh, we took it down and had it kind of like blown up with a photographer and stuff. And he goes, oh, my God, I don't know what that is, but there's like fire flames coming out all around it. So that's where my story begins as far as becoming a, 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 a on fire Christian, basically. I mean, really? Yeah. And the fire has just gotten hotter and hotter after 20 something years. You know, people say you haven't calmed down. You're why are you uh, like so got so much energy? The zeal in you is like. You know, and I said, hey, you get the fire from heaven like this downloaded in you. And I want to see you, you know, just be like calm and collected all the time because I am not Nicholas, I'm telling you. But a lot of things happened during that time with me because it was like I went from leaps. to I went leaps and bounds. I mean, it was like God um, catapulted me from, I want to say, point A to point D, like within a matter of months. Um, that was 1999, uh, 99 in May. So by the time January came, I was already in Bible college. Um, I wanted to, I was hungry. I had to have more of God's word. I mean, I devoured his word. That was my life. That became my all my whole life yeah. and being totally consecrated for him. Because when this happened to me, I literally stayed home in in, in in my room basically for about three years because he spoke to me, downloaded in me, not knowing what he was going to be doing because I had no clue. Yeah. Um, but so then I, I, I finished my Bible college and then um, it was funny because just out of the blue, the church I was attending, these general prophets, apostles came to visit the church that I was attending. And one of them was... Um, Dutch Sheets, Chuck Pierce, Barbara Wilm Trouble, Barbara Yoder, um, and I, there was one more I can't remember. Oh, C. Peter Wagner. They flew in to Madeira to this church, and that was in the year 2000. Hmm. And they gave a prophetic word, and they said that God had sent them there to give a word because he had done something in particular in that church body. I was one of them. Um, and they said that God had just um, recently, in other words, like God has just recently downloaded his fire into a few people in this church body. And we're here to just uh, let you all know that now God is saying that you are, um, he has called you to be cat- uh, catalyst. You will carry fires from one church to another church, another church body, wherever he sends you, regions, wherever. And again, not understanding fully, I'm like, what does that mean? You know, you're a very big Christian. You don't know that God is downloading all this stuff. And, you know, in the book of Jeremiah, he says, you know, before I formed you in your mother's womb, you know, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations, not knowing that 
this was happening, you know, all together with me. And so I still didn't understand, but I do know that within a few months, I did leave because then he put me into a very powerful ministry, which is, uh, it's, it's an apostolic prophetic ministry, which I, where I'm, I'm under um, uh, Gary, I'm sorry, yeah, Gary uh, Hall, prophet, I mean, Apostle Gary Hall, and he's out of Fresno, California. Um, so I went, I actually went there, I was trained up, I became um, ordained at that point. I was only, again, a Christian for like about three months. Uh, but I'll tell you something, uh, Nicholas, God used me in such a way that it was so powerful in healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had me pray for a lady, a young lady one day when we were in service and it was actually her and her mother. They had been in a major car accident, uh, 12 years prior. So she had to go to Stanford like twice a month and she had a shunt in her head to, to drain out the the fluid that was, uh, that accum would accumulate in her brain. Yeah. Her mother was in a wheelchair. So these two women that were attending the church I was going to, and this is prior to going uh, to leaving this first church. Mm -hmm. um, God told me in one service, and, and it's funny because ever since this happened to me, you would very rarely see me sitting down in a chair during church service on Wednesday nights. I yeah. would be under the chairs because yeah. I couldn't get up. Yeah. Um, so he tells me, I want you to go pray for this young lady. I'm going to heal her tonight. And I'm saying, but God, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't, I, I can't even get up and walk. How am I going to do this Lord? Cause this is one in one conversation with him. And he's like, don't worry about it. I'll get you there. I just need you to do that. And I say, okay. I was literally on crawling on my hands and knees to get up to that altar just to touch her. I think I touched her foot. That woman screamed, and that's all I can remember. Uh, so Sunday, uh, we went back to church. She went up there and testified that she had gone to Stanford like the prior day, I think on a Wednesday or a Friday. But Sunday, she went up there and said that her, she was completely healed, that, she, that they removed the shut out of her brain, and now she was completely made whole. And everybody's like, wow, wow, that's awesome. And I'm going, wow, God, you were amazing. You were amazing. I was like blown away. Wow. He was giving me like a one-on-one -on -one lesson on who Jesus, you know, yeah. how he moved, you know, uh, in healings, miracles, and signs and wonders. And, and yet I was like in this special class with him. He was teaching me, downloading all this stuff. And um, in actuality, too, I, I, I didn't get to pray for the mama. But God had showed me her uh, out, of a wheel out of the wheelchair and dancing before him in worship. So when that Sunday came, I saw the mama and she's in her wheelchair and she kind of like wheelchairs in front of me. And I look at her, her name was Anna, I can remember that. And I go, Anna, what are you doing in your wheelchair? You're not supposed to be in that wheelchair. You're supposed to be dancing and, and praising God and leaping. And, and she goes, she looked at me like, oh, how can you say that to me? You see, I'm in a wheelchair. And she kind of got a little angry rolled herself away, and yet I got to, I, I stood there and I said, God, what happened? Why isn't, why didn't this happen? And he goes, because she doesn't want it. See, we have to really want and desire our healing because God is, he's, he's wanting to give, it, to give it to us more than we want it, yeah. you know, and this is what he was teaching me, and he was just downloading all this stuff and, and, and the gift of faith, I mean, I've got a radical faith. Nobody can tell me that's never going to happen because I, I, it's too late. Like I tell everybody, if you were going to try to tell me that God isn't real, Jesus doesn't heal, the dead don't rise, the, all this stuff, or the demons don't, aren't cast out, it's too late. You should have got me before 1999, and I probably would have believed you, but I don't now. There's nothing that would change my mind because I've done so much of this, you know? And he's like so good and um yeah so yeah so i continued in this church and i was being taught and raised and, and the things of god in order especially his order because it's so important you know god is a god of order i mean we can go to churches and go crazy nuts but really we god is a god of order right and, and but i have <laughs> i have uh i have met ronnie Hare brown have you ever heard of ronnie Hare brown up in yes. florida uh -huh. Okay, so 
Yes, he's amazing. And I actually got to uh, be a part of his uh, evangelistic team for about a week. And doing that, I'm now on his, um, on, his we- on his website for if anybody needs prayer, or healing, or whatever, they can contact me through that website. But I'll tell you that I've had people call me from other states saying, oh, I saw your name, my, my you know, so-and-so's in the hospital in your area, can you go pray for them? And absolutely, you know. Um, one instance that I had where I actually prayed for this young man that was um, out of Lemoore, he was in the Navy, him and his wife got in a car accident, and he, um, he actually was on life support. There, there was no, no more hope. Um, but the grandmother called me up she, I can't remember the state she was in, but she found my name uh, on, on uh, Ronnie Heron Brown's website. And she says, I, I, I see your name here. Can you please go? He is in, actually in Fresno uh, Community Hospital. I'm like, sure. So she gave me a little information about his name and stuff. So I went over there and he asked, the, the nurse looked at me and says, you know, really, we've already called all the family. He's not going to make it through the night. His body is completely crushed. His lungs there's no more, his, his, his ribs are, he's totally, he's just gone. He's going to be gone here as soon as we take the stuff off of him. Yeah. And I said, oh, okay, all right. Well, do you mind leaving me alone with him, please? Jesus did that. Yeah. Jesus did not want any unbelievers with him when he prayed. And I'm the same way. When I, when I see when it's that critical like that, I usually will tell the family members, I need somebody that's got the same kind of faith that I have because I'm going to pray that person well. I'm going to pray that person back to wholeness, the way God wants me to pray. So they left. I went in there and I spoke to him and, you know, his, I believe his name was Jacob. And I said, Jacob, hi, my name's Terry. And I'm sitting there just conversing with him because I'm talking spirit to spirit. And so I'm talking to him and I'm like, you know, you will live and you will not die. You know, you will live to proclaim the word of God. And I'm going to speak life back into your body. So I just spoke everything that God told me to speak into his body, that his ribs would come back, you know, back to normal, that all of his organs that were crushed would be replaced with new organs because God will bring them down and he will place them in him. Because I can visually see all this stuff as I'm speaking it. So uh, his wife came in. And she was devastated. She was in the same accident, but she wasn't as bad. Uh, His mother flew in from Texas. So I told them to come in because see, Nicholas, sometimes you have to have these witnesses before to see these miracles, before they can, a lot of them have to see something to believe. Well, as I was praying, they were both crying and I could feel the Holy Spirit just moving, you know. And so I was able to bring both of them to salvation. And I told them, I told the wife, today is Sunday. By Wednesday, he will be sitting up and eating cereal. She's like, what? And I go, just watch, believe. I'm telling you the truth. I mean, I'm not just going to say this and say it. And she's like, oh, okay. So I left. And then um, I was actually in a meeting that morning on Wednesday when I get the phone call from her. And I go out and I go, hi. I go, so how's it going? She goes, she's hysterical, screaming at the top of her lungs. She's hysterical. And she says to me, you're right. My husband, he's sitting up and he's eating a bowl of cereal and he's, he's fine. And they're going to release him here on Friday. I said, you see? And she was just, her and her mother, the mother uh, his mother, they were both, I could hear her crying in the background. She says, I want to know what church do you go to? What church is it that you go to? And I said, honey, it's not the church. Yeah. It's Jesus. He's the healer. He's the one. She's like, oh my God, I want to know him. I want to know him even more. And my husband needs to know him. And I go, okay, all right. So I told her which church I was attending. And they, and they showed up there actually uh, like two Sundays later or something because he was able to walk. <laughs> so he shows up, gives me the biggest hug and he goes, Oh my God. I said, Jacob, you're a miracle. You know that you would have got God's miracles. He goes, I know, I know. And I just want to thank you. And he was hugging me. I go again, no, 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 don't thank me. It's Jesus. <laughs> and so I was able to lead him to the Lord. So the whole family was saved. There was a miracle because Jesus is the way maker, the miracle worker. You know that I love that song yeah, because song. that's who he is. He's all of that, you know, and, um, and my, so 
you know, and just down the line throughout the years, I, I can't even, there's so much that has happened. So many people that I've prayed for that were on life support, they're literally dead. And they came back because God's word says that we're to do that. That's the great commission. And it's not just for the evangelists. It's for all the fivefold. You know, it's for believers. That is the commission that God says we need to go out there, lay hands on the sick. They will recover, pray for the dead, raise the dead. Uh, you know, this is what he's wanting us to do. And I was, um, I was actually ministering. Uh, after all that happened, then God released me to minister to other places. He was sending me everywhere. And in the year 2003 to 2006, I was actually uh, part of a great revival that happened here in Tulare, California. Yeah, and it was Jubilee outpouring. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah, that was but there. I was. You were there. I visited. I was. I used to used to live in uh, Porterville, California. Ah, okay. Well, I was one of the ministers there for those three and a half years. Yeah. So you, then you know what I'm going to be talking about. The presence of God was so heavy in there, so powerful, and um, I literally just I slept in the church. I slept on the altar for those three and a half years, because that was the closest that I was going to be able to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. It was the same, it was the same atmosphere. Yeah. You know, um, there was times when God's presence was so heavy in there that it, it felt, the only way I can describe it is, is it felt like you were actually moving through a, a room full of jello, yeah. just barely trying to make your way through because the presence, his glory was so thick and heavy. And a lot of times we didn't even have to, we didn't have to lay hands on people. God did it. As soon as they walked in, I saw so many healings. I saw so many miracles, creative miracles. Um, and, uh, and so I was able to um, be a part of that. And I learned so much. And that's actually where um, God told me, Yes, you you are you know you are my evangelist, but I'm also making you a revivalist because you will be the, one of the ones I'm picking to to go out and revive the revive the ministers. There's so many out there that have, that aren't going to want a church anymore because it, for reasons like maybe they got church hurt or you know they got a, 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 a you know somebody came against them or they saw some or God let them down in some way you know. Uh, whatever reason they decide they're not going to church anymore yeah. but God but it's funny because people still come to me and they say you know what I, I was a minister and I remember doing this I go okay well let's restore you let's restore you back because this is what God wants especially now Nicholas because it's we're you know as everybody knows look at the times look where we're at yes I see little pockets of revival happening in California right now with Sean Boyd, you know, he's out there and, and people are, are uh, getting baptized in, in their salvation, but where are they going to go, you know, after the salvation? That's my concern. Um, we can't just let them run out loose, you know, yeah. they've got fire, whatever it is, but where are they going to take this fire? They need to be discipled. They need to be taught. Let's do this. And this, this is where I'm coming in and I'm training up people that are out there that are, okay, I've got all this fire, you know, you can't have it uh, yeah, you can. You're supposed to have the fire because you need it right now. But come on, we got to get together here and let's make a bigger fire. But let's do it the right way, the way God wants us to do it. You know, um, so many ministers and pastors that I see that because I have I have spoken at several churches and they said, tell us about the revivals. Tell us about the fire of God. And it, what happens is, let me tell you something fire of God purges, it, uh, it cleans you out, right? But it also reveals. And a lot of people, they don't want to be revealed. They've got stuff they still want to hang on to. And God says, let it go. It's okay. I've got you, you know? Um, and I've seen a lot of that, especially with pastors, you know, leaders. It's like, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. But, you know, I learned one thing that sometimes the deliverer needs deliverance. And that's okay. It's yeah. okay. You know, let's get all the junk out of the trunk. 
so that we have this empty place where God can come in and put more fire in, more of his glory in, so we can go out there and bring the, the, the loss. Let's get this, you know, salvation is for today. Let's not wait anymore. And that's, that's basically what I do. You know, um, I've opened up my home um, and people have come to my house. In the last two weeks, I can't tell you how many people have come to my home. Oh, nice. And I, we, and now, well, I, I have a team, and um, so we'll get together. We'll, and there's and one thing that I, this is me. I'm not a one man show. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't like it. I'm a team person. Yeah. It's not about me because it's not. It's about him. It's his anointing. It's not my anointing. It's it, you know, in my and the and the team that I have around me. It's not theirs, but it's God. So let's all get together. Let's get this set person saved. Let's get them free. You know, let's get them cleaned up so they can unite with us and we all go out and bring some more in. That's the only way that I can see this is going to happen. Oh, you know, good. people pray for revival all the time, but you really need to know what re true revival is. It starts within us. It starts within our hearts. It starts in our homes. You know, I, I see it funny where people go out and I want revival, but yet their homes are all messed up. Their, their mom and dad aren't saved. Their little brothers and sisters or if they're married, you know, one of the other spouses, it's, let's start it here because this is when the fire is going to start, you know, and so and I'm, I'm actually in the process of um, making my house, a, I'm calling it a firehouse, okay. so whoever wants to come in, they're here, you know, they can be saved, set free, delivered, and then train them to go out, mm. so it's like a, it's like a, it's not a church, I don't like to call it a church, I just <laughs> call it a gathering, you know what I'm saying? like yeah. the book of acts because that's what it is it's a book of acts mm -hmm. you know yeah. they had to come back they went out but they had to come back someplace to get refreshed and i'd like to i know this house is a house of refreshing it's a house of uh getting refired it's a house of getting um back to where we're supposed to be you know uh, as, as god has called us to carry out the fire because we're catalysts you know we're this pioneering spirit that god says hey yeah i'm sending you to different places so you know get ready i'm sending you and i was one of the ones that used to say send me lord you know like the prophet isaiah said you know hey the angels came and put that coal on their on his lips he goes send me lord and, and that's where, where where i'm at so that's just a little bit um, there's so much yeah no i i completely yeah. understand i relate i i know what you're talking about with that gel I, i've never heard anybody explain it like that um i remember the first time uh, it was at the father's house. Uh, ah. Assuming you remember the father's house there in Fresno, but yes, um, yes. I remember the first time that I ever felt um, what I call the realness of God or the felt presence of God. I I'd always described it as, you know, those people hang the beads in the in the hallway or something. It was yes. just like it was just like moving beads and it just never stopped. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes. But yeah, I, I, I just remember everyone, I could never understand what people were talking about because I had never, you know, felt something outside of myself at that point. Um, and it was just like, oh, okay, now I can kind of, because before I felt that, I looked around, these people are weird, these people are nuts, man. They got these flags waving around. Everyone's rolling around laughing and, and jerking and shaking. And, you know, it was chaos, a, a wonderful, beautiful chaos. Yes. But after that happens to you, like you said, you kind of understand, oh, this is a whole, whole different dimension or reality or whatever you want to call it. So, yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah. And you're right, because I used to call it, I used to call it divine chaos. Yeah. Yeah, it was divine chaos. And it was all whole. Holy Spirit. I mean, because we were there. I mean, we could tell. We could tell because I know that there was there would be several ministers that would come in and they try to like take over. It paralleled so much with Azusa because I studied. I studied Azusa like crazy because yeah, that was, was always my heart. There was like know, a, a, I forget which book it was. There was a book about Azusa Street Revival. It might have been named that or whatever. Well, yeah, Bartleman wrote that. Yeah. Wrote a book. Yes. Yeah, that was and really so good. so I would have, exactly, I would have ministers that would come in and they thought that they were going to come in and bring their ministry in. And, you know, oh God, and the same thing, Seymour did the same thing. He had to actually rebuke those ministers and tell them, hey, this is not God. You're to come in and be ministered to. You yeah. know, you're out there ministering everywhere this way. You're running, 
here and there, this church, that church, you know, towns here. Why don't you come and rest and let God minister to you? But was you know? he, the, and that was was he the one that um, like hid in like an apple barrel or something to, to pray? A box, a, a crate. <laughs> he put a crate on yeah, his head. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that. the pastor of that, of that church, his name uh, was Ken um, Bowman. Him and his wife, Rachel, Ken and Rachel Bowman, they're the ones who uh, were the pastors in that church. And it was called Jubilee Christian Fellowship. And it was like, do you remember? It was in the middle of this neighborhood where yeah. you had prostitutes and yeah. gangbangers. And it was the lowest of the lowest part of that town. Mm -hmm. But God still showed up. Yeah. Why? Because this man, this pastor had such a, a passion and a heart for God. He wanted him there so bad. And my, my, I became friends with them as, you know, being there for all that time. Um, they told me that he, he was on his face like over a year praying. He was, he went, reminded me of uh, John Kilpatrick with, you know, in, in Pensacola. Same thing, you know, yelling, screaming out to God, I got to have more, God. We want more. It's got to be you, more of you. And, you know, and I found out that God will move in a church, but it has to start with the head. You can have all the congregation going to prayer meetings, fasting, doing what they need to do, but God wants the head of that church body to do that. You know, it's like, example, like uh, about Aaron's beard, when the oil was poured upon the head of Aaron and the, the, the oil went through, right? It has to go from the head through the beard, through the body. So this is how God moves. But yet, he showed me one thing that was very interesting. Yes, he can do that, but what is actually in the beard? You know, what is actually in that beard? Is it clean? Is it pure? Is it ready? Is it time to do this? So God looks at all of this stuff. So that's what this pastor did. And I remember that uh, the prophecy at that church was a lady went in, a prophet, went in uh, like maybe six months before this took place and said, God was going to be sending um, an evangelist to the church. And when he got there, that God was going to come and answer the prayers of that, those pastors. Sure enough, he did. And it was funny because Pastor Bowen had gone up to Mariposa to one of the churches up there. And this evangelist was actually from Oklahoma. And he was there at that church. And he looked at him and the man, and, the, and his name was Joe Chiquino. I love this man because he became my spiritual father for those three and a half years. And he's my Papa Joe. And, yeah. and so he, um, he looked at him and he said, um, or who are you from? Talk to him. So he goes, no, I'm from Oklahoma and God is going to visit your church. He talked to me. He said he was going to visit your church. Be ready, be prepared. And then he goes, okay. So, Pastor Ken says, well, I'd like you to come to my church, not knowing that it was him that was going to be, God was going to use to usher in the revival. Okay. So he did. He came to, to Jubilee. I believe it was on the second night. They were going to supposed to only have like a week revival, like a lot of these churches have, you know, a week. We're going to have revival. Well, that is not revival. And a week <laughs> is not revival. I'm sorry. I, I, I know. And so... The week turned into three and a half years. That was revival. And Joe was the one who ushered it in. And I'm telling you, when I, I heard about this, I heard about it after about a month. It was within, it was a month. And someone called me and I was getting ready to minister at a church in um, Selma. I, yeah, I was in Selma. And I was getting ready and somebody called me and says, you have got to get to, to, to Tulare like now, like right, right now. And I go, I can't, I'm ministering today. No, you've got to go now. Terry, you're not going <laughs> to believe this, but there's hundreds of cars everywhere, hundreds. And they all have different license plates. There's semis out there. There's trucks, there's vans. I don't know what's going on in this church, but there's hundreds of people lined up to get in. I'm like, okay, where is it? He gave me the address moment I walked in there and right before I got there the Lord told me he says I'm going to take you're going to walk into this church and you're going to have hear people falling like trees and I'm like what does that mean Lord I got there and sure enough nobody laid hands all you did was walk into that church and you hear thump, thump, thump. people were falling 
Nobody was catching. There were too many to catch at one time. <laughs> they weren't prepared for this. Yeah. This was something that just happened. I, I saw, you know, the little, the modesty claws that they put on you when you go, you know, you're out. Yeah. I saw, and they were red. I saw them flying here and flying there and catch that one. And they catch this one and they catch this one and they're flying all over the air because they were trying to cover people up because they were falling by 50s. 7,500 of them falling all at once. I'm like, oh my God, what am I seeing here? I, I think I went in like, it was like, what is this, you know? So as time went on, we actually had Charisma Magazine. They showed up, they did an article on it. Um, and the crazy tabloids were showing up like <laughs> Sun. And I don't know, there was another one, I can't remember, but they started showing up. Channel 47 showed up one night and that did a segment called Do You Believe in Miracles? And they set their cameras up. They set the television, you know, all the cameras and whatever. They probably lasted, I want to say, just enough to set up because they couldn't even, they just let it go. And they were on the floor, on the ground wow. because the presence of God was that heavy. Yeah. And they left just, uh, they were just, you know, amazed. But that's what was happening. And God was healing miracles. I mean, this woman was blind all her life and she was already an elderly lady. God made her eyeballs just pop in. She was able to see screaming, yelling, running up and down the yeah. church. And, uh, there was a lady that came in with muscular dystrophy. Yeah. She was in a wheelchair. God healed her, got out of the wheelchair and she was dancing before the Lord. We had people from Russia, China, um, Africa. We had an African um, king that came in with his entourage. Wow. It was mind blowing. That's why I couldn't leave. I know that if I was to leave, I was going to miss something. I didn't want to <laughs> miss anything. I yeah. wanted to see it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, I used to uh, talk about uh, bringing, just bringing my sleeping bag and I'm, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> yes. Did you ever do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's amazing. Oh, I'm so glad because we had people sleeping in there a lot. We had to keep it open 24 seven because the worship was going 24 seven, 24 seven. Yeah. It never ended. It couldn't because people were getting, that's why because was going to come in and out of the church during the evening because people were flying in. People were bringing in um, their loved ones on gurneys that were had stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. Cancer was just falling off of people, you know, and it was like, I, the one thing I was amazed at was all these people that came from all over the world, but yet we hardly got anybody from around this area. Mm -hmm. We had a few, but not like in the hundreds as the other ones were coming in. Yeah. And um, that, that always amazed me, but just to be able to be in that, um, that was history for me. And actually, I had some people from Los Angeles, Fred and Wilma Berry. They're actually the ones who have now taken over the Azusa, um, uh, the Azusa stuff that, you know, because they, they every year they do like the Centennial and stuff. Okay. So they're part of Azusa now and they've taken over that. So they actually came and visited me um, there at, 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 uh, at Jubilee. Unfortunately, I was on the altar uh, and I was a wreck, so yeah. I couldn't talk to anybody. <laughs> that happened so many times. Oh, she's over there, you know, on her belly, and she's crying out to God, so I don't think you want to disturb her right now. I was like, oh, but you couldn't help it. Yeah. You know, it was so intense there. And, Mary, um, um, how, how was that coming out of that, though? What, what was that... Um, was it kind of hard afterwards? I mean, oh, it was like three years. Or what what happened after that? At, when the when it was starting to die, I want I don't want to call it a die down, but thing. Let me tell you what stops revivals like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's man. Mm -hmm. Basically, when man starts to come in with his ideas and his agendas yeah. and starts to speak to the pastors or whatever. Hey, I got an idea. This it's like you're doing this. You know, this is going on the same thing. Why don't we add a little of this or why don't we do a little of that? And as soon as you start doing that, and believe me, the enemy will come in and they will do, they will do whatever, he will do whatever he can to get the pastor out of focus, you know, to focus on other, these kind of things instead of still focusing it, on the Lord. It, it seems like sometimes that um, 
people sometimes uh, God is so simple, you know, love his fire. And, and it's like, is this, is this too simple? Should we do something else? Should we, you know, add on to it? And it's like, no. Let's... It, and that's what happens. That's what will stop it. Yeah. It will stop when man comes in because he's no. And that was sad. You know, I was devastated. I was really okay. devastated because, yeah. um, in fact, when that started to go away, I remember the last time that I was there, I, I, my husband went with me and I told him, I said, I can't even drive home. I'm devastated. Yeah. I can't even, because it was like, when I came back, you know, from that encounter that I had with him, it was devastating to me. But yet, um, I don't know why that happened. And, and like, you know what I'm saying? I, it's been so hard for me to find a church that I fit into. It's like, I feel like either a, a round peg or a square peg trying to fit in a round hole or square hole. I don't fit. It's, it's almost like you, you look around and you're like, are you, you guys, um, you know, there's, there's something more, right? There's something. Yes. So it's like, are you guys not hungry or what's going on here? Yes. Yes. But you know, I, I I, I don't know. All I could do is, you know, just continue to have my, you know, I have church here. I'm actually under an apostle, the same one that I was, that I went to when I first got ordained. I yeah. kind of made like a 360 and, <laughs> and now I'm back with him um, because he's but giving what, me. Uh, what does that, what does that mean for some people that are watching that may not know kind of what, what that language is like um, you being under the, that apostle, the apostle. What is an apostle who. Oh, Okay. So we find that there is a fivefold ministry in the book of Ephesians, correct? We have the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That is God's complete, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's who Jesus, this is who he's appointed. So we all have calls in our lives. And it just depends on, on like, I'm an evangelist, you know, but I move in the apostolic, the prophetic, uh -huh. you know, I, I'm a prophetic voice, like if, also move in the office of the prophet. So if I see something or whatever, and God has me speaking out, I, I will do that. But yet, I, because of this fire that burns in me, I still can move in the um, in the in the office of the evangelist. Okay. Um, so, but my apostle is the one who he is the one who God uh, ordains apostles are the ones who are sent ones. So they're the ones who plant churches and. Uh, you know, uh, but yet the po the prophet is stands right next to the apostle. You know, if he hears something or gives, he, he wants to, God is speaking to him. Oh, God says, don't plant that church here. I'm here to let you know why and what's going on. Oh, okay. So we're all fitted together. And that is what causes this, this unity. And God's able to move in this, okay. you know. Um, the the because, apostle that you're talking about, he has a church in uh, Fresno area? Yes, yes. He has a church in Fresno. And uh, I'm under that, and he, and actually, I, you know, I can do um, uh, my deliverance ministry, prayer there, and all that stuff. So, yes, and it, it's called RCI, which is uh, Remnant Church International, and that's in Fresno. And uh, so we just bought another building, and it's actually going to be like an institute, like training hubs. Okay. We're going to actually be training hubs for people that have the fire of God, people that are in deliverance. So there's going to be all this training. It's a training center, you know, so the, I'm the really deliverance, the deliverance. Yes. Um, I think I, I think it was you actually that I saw uh, the shirt that said, I cast out demons yes. it said, uh, for free. <laughs> yeah. Is, <laughs> <That's me. laughs> is that a shirt that you just found or did you make those shirts or? No, actually in the uh, John Eckhart through John Eckhart. Okay. <laughs> yeah. His ministry. Yeah, he's yeah. a deliverance minister and a prophet. Yeah, how, so how, I follow them. Yeah. How did you, um, you know, there's there's some people who have kind of heard about deliverance in a, in a scary movie or something. Um, mm -hmm. There's people that have been in church all their lives and have never could, you know, they've never seen someone who had a demon maybe or, or what, it, that's kind of a lot of mystery and a lot of, um, you know, it's it seems so mystical what what is your story with kind of coming into that world do you remember the first time you were with someone who maybe manifested and what did that look like were, mm -hmm. were you afraid uh talk us through that 
Actually, it was in, in, in revival. Yeah. It was in revival. I mean, people would just hit the floor and then all of a sudden they, you know, go around <laughs> like snakes and stuff like that. But, you know, God was teaching us how to deliver and get those things out of people, you know, um, and those, 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 and they're real. Uh, um, the spirit realm is real. People, if you believe in angels, you know, God, there's angels yeah. and, you know, then there's demons too. Yeah. There, there is that, that, uh, that spirit world, that realm. Um, so I've seen it and they don't scare me. They don't frighten me. You know, if, as long as you know, the word of God, it's all you need. You know, people are like, Oh, uh, I'm scared. It scares me. Well, why should it just give him the word of God? He knows it. It knows the word because if you remember yeah. when Jesus was in the wilderness, he spoke the word to Jesus, you know? Uh, so he does know. And he also, the, the, the Satan knows rank. Let's put it this way. Uh -huh. Um, uh, God has us as, uh, as ministers, uh, you know, you have apostles, prophets, like I said, but we're also, there are some you've heard that are generals in the, in the ministry, in the faith, you know, um, there was a lot of them. Look at Billy Graham. He was a general in the faith because of, he knew how, uh, he knew how to use the, the anointing that God gave him to bring people to salvation, you know, yeah. hundreds and thousands, all the rewards that man has, you know, now in heaven, for, because of that ministry. So he was a general. Oral Roberts was a general. Morris Cirillo was a general. All these, gen, you know, they, they've all gone down to be with God, but, you know, they're generals. They're like, their rank is up here. And so they, the devil knows that. And he also has rank. He also has generals. He has lieutenants and he has these. So what he's, his assignment is to size somebody up, you know, that they can go. Now, um, I don't know if you've heard of John Ramirez, but yeah. I, I, okay. Well, John Ramirez, he's, he's very, being very well known right now. In fact, I brought him to Selma, uh, back in 2018. Uh, I brought, I had him here for two nights and that was a sellout. I mean, I had like 2,000 2, people show up yeah. for him. Now he used to be, he was like the third, um, th the number three high ranking satanic priest. He was raised that way and groomed that way. Uh, so all he did was cause havoc, you know, Satan was his dad, you know, he says, oh, that was my daddy. I mean, he would come and visit me and I speak one-on-one -on -one and I had assignments and he told me where I had to go. And he says, he talks about how he would put cancer on people and how he would, and this is all demonic. This, this is stuff. This is how we get a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And so, and you know what? And a lot of ha things happen because of the sin in our lives. You know, you can be born again and you can still sin. I'm sorry. I, I don't believe in that once saved, always saved. You know, you have to, you have to, on a daily basis. I know I do because I'm out there in the world and I'm, I'm around stuff and if things attach, they, they will attach. And it's like, God, forgive me if I saw something or heard something or might have said something that was displeasing to you. I have to do this daily. And, and I learned this through Tulare laying on that altar for three and a half years, you know, um, Yes, he's given me fire and fire helps. I tell people, whatever you do, if you're not being baptized in the fire of God, do that because the devils can't come around you when you're full of the fire of God. And this is what John Ramirez says, because when he was that high ranking de devil out there, uh, there would be, he could see like a group of Christians praying, right? And if they didn't have the fire of God in them and they didn't have the fervor and all of that stuff, he says, I can go and attack every single one of them and bring havoc to their lives or families. I could cause them to have accidents. But when I saw a group that had the fire of God and the way they pray, I could not even come, not even six feet from them. I had, I couldn't, if, yeah. they, if there was an assignment that I was to go put out on them, I would go back and report to Satan and say, I can't get near those people. No, never mind. Then leave them alone. Let's go. Let's go to that church over there because they don't have the fire, you know. So go over there. and he would go over there and cause havoc in that church. Did you he, know, and this he is say, um, did he say kind of like how he how he would wreak havoc? Would he is he talking about like putting spells on people or he would he would have <clears throat> the devil his dad his father would give him assignments and he oh. would say, see that person over there? You're going to go over there to that neighborhood and you're going to cause accidents. You're going to cause murders. There's going to be drive-bys, you know? So, and, and one thing about uh, uh, 
a, a spirit, you know, the, the spirit, the enemy that, that enters into you because there's like, there's the principalities and it speaks about it in the book of Ephesians. You know, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but we battle, battle against principalities, powers, rulers, you know, because they're out there. So it's not the person, but what's in the person is who we battle. So if he was to be assigned to go to certain places, that's when the devil told him to do stuff like that, he would do it, you know. But thank God that, um, and you can see his story on the 700 Club. In fact, that's where I first, first saw him was on the 700 Club under John Ramirez, uh, ex-Satanist, because he's no longer that doing that because God gave him a, took him to hell. He says, okay, I'll show you. I'll show you hell. You want to do this? Let me show you. Had a rude awakening, came back, was on fire for God and said, I'll never, thank you, God. And that was um because he was doing that for over 25 years he was raised up from his dad because his dad was a warlock yeah and so that's all he knew because that's how he was raised but now he is on fire powerful man of god i mean i go to i attend all of his meetings he does a lot of training boot camp training because when i saw him back on the 700 club i knew immediately it, it was not his time and i'm god this man is He's way before his time. Nobody's going to listen to this man. It's like way out there. People are not going to get it. But later on, I mean, I met him in 2017 and I just told him, I, I'm bringing you to the Central Valley. And he's like, okay, okay. So he came and he says, he, he laughs. He goes, I never thought you did because he's from the Bronx, New York. And so he goes, I didn't think that was going to happen because a lot of people say they're going to bring you. I said, no, no, God said to bring you. So he came, a lot of people were blessed, and since then, I, I follow him. Um, in fact, he's going to get come back um, very soon. He's going to come back soon. Uh, he, I mean, I, I, text with, I text him, call him, and stuff like that. But he is such an amazing trainer right now that we need because he is revealing and exposing the dark side right now. And it's something we really need to pay attention to uh, because the devil's no joke. He's out there, you know. Um, like he said, he, he would even go to like to, to cemeteries and to graves. And he, if somebody died of cancer, he'd pull the cancer out of them and go put it on somebody else. Wow. That's deep stuff. Yeah. You know, it is. But you know what? I learned so much through the ministry, for the ministry with that because we had a, a lady that came in uh, during this last week. And thank God that I have a I have a brother and sister in Christ that live in Georgia and they came down to visit me for two weeks. So our two ministries got together. We got on Facebook and, and um, social media and said, Hey, anybody need deliverance out there? You need prayer. You need to get it right. You know, how's your ministries doing And All kinds of people were showing up and we were delivering them and setting them free from devils. Well, this one lady had a Leviathan spirit and I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's actually uh, in the book of Job. And it's a, it's a water spirit. It's a marine spirit. And that woman actually had it in her. It wouldn't let her go. Yeah. And she was starting to levitate. That's how bad it got. She was levitating. And I had to put my hands on her shoulders to keep her from going because she was going up. Mm -hmm. And yet we finally, it took like about six of us and just commanding, declaring, decreeing as God's word says to do, that thing came out of her. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a little bit, but it actually finally came out. And, uh, how, and it does, how did, did she say like how how she knew that something was wrong with her? Did somebody tell her that hey, you need you know right. what, what did that look like? Right, she was from the Stockton area, and she said that she had gone to because she had a friend with her that came with her. She says I have we have gone to I can't tell you how many other ministries, and nobody can get this thing out. They pray, they pray, and I go well. The ingredient is the fire of God. You've got to have the fire of God to get those things out. And they're like, whoa, okay, all right. So she kept saying that she felt this thing and it moving from in her stomach. It will from one side, the other side, and then it will go up her back. She could actually feel it. Yeah. So as she's telling us this, you could see, actually see her stomach, and it would get like really big, like she was like pregnant big. And then you could see it doing like waves like this because it was moving around inside of her. Yeah. We knew that it was in there. 
huge. And if you know anything about the Leviathan, it's like a serpent. It's like a big snake and it's got like seven heads and it's got a crown around it. So that's a thing. Those are, those are things we have to study, you know, and we have to know what we're saying and what we're pulling out. And because that thing is smart, you know, it plays, it thinks it's, you know, if you know about the seven heads of that thing, you know, you have to call every one of those out. One of them is mischievous. It's a mischievous spirit. So it likes to play with you. Like it'll start screaming and yelling and just throwing a fit and levitating because it wants you to get distracted. And those kind of things. I, I know them and I'm like, just, I finally had to tell it, just shut your mouth and you're coming out of her quietly. And now I'm giving you 30 seconds to come out of her. And sure enough, she goes, came out she was done and her friend goes oh my god she says we I've, i she's i just took her to this other place this uh guy that was going to be praying deliverance and she was standing up against the wall and she was climbing up the wall i had to grab her ankles to bring her back down that's how bad this thing was mm -hmm. and i go that's it and then i then after i prayed her i prayed that thing out of her i said now i'm going to impart you with the fire of god so that thing will not be able to come back to you because she kept saying well it just doesn't want to go away it hides and it does this and this no it's not going to hide anymore because we're going to burn it out with the god's fire and so yeah she received it she got the fire she got set and she was a whole different person when she left this house you know and her friend was like oh my god and this is what's been happening you know i go on zoom and i just talked to a lady in florida same thing we had to get that devil out of her office through zoom yeah. you know it works because the anoint there's no distance in the anointing it'll go through you know and she was so happy she got delivered so free and it was like yes she says i'm going to keep in contact oh absolutely keep in contact with me you know in this ministry you know so this is what we do and um you know there's but we need more people yeah we need more people to go out not to be afraid of it because like i said if you know your words it's going to be okay. And, 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 and I learned in Tulare because so many manifested in Tulare, you know, I had a guy that told his eyes totally turned black, like black. There was no white in the eyes, just black. And he tried to come at me and I had some other people around me and they grabbed him because he was going after me, but he, he couldn't touch me. You know, the, the, the fire's too hot. They, they burn up, they scream, they hit the floor, you know, it's like, and it's just amazing because I'm like, whoa, God, you're so cool, <laughs> you know? And uh, I mean, I saw a homosexual spirit come out of somebody because you're not born as a homosexual, I don't care. And people might get mad at me on this thing, but no, you're not, it's a spirit. And Satan will cause his, his little imps or whatever demons to put that in a person. So it's not because, no, you're not born with it. Anyway, um, so this guy, his mom brings him in, wants him delivered from his homosexual spirit. And he has this t-shirt on, this tank top. And he's standing there and I said, you want, you want that, you want to be delivered from that. You want that to go away. You don't want that lifestyle. He goes, no, I don't want this lifestyle anymore. Okay. So just started praying for him. And you know that crazy thing? It's, I'm telling you, it like, it likes to play around. So he thought he was real funny and cute. Because remember, we don't battle against the flesh and blood, but what's in him. Do you know that he made that guy, he was standing up like this, and then he made the guy tear his t-shirt up, bind him all, bind himself up with his own t-shirt. I, I don't know how he did this, but like, say this is his head. He flipped him over like that. The guy's head's on the floor. His legs are sticking straight up. He's going, ah. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laugh a lot because it's funny to me. It's like, oh my God, it's so funny. And it's like, I, then it's time to just, because I want him to, these things to know, I'm not afraid of you. Well, that, that's safe. like the, the only thing, only weapon in a sense they have is fear. Exactly. <laughs> Ex funny. And he knows it. Yeah. He knows it. I can't tell you how many ministers ran out of the church uh -huh. when things like that happened. They, you didn't see them anymore. Well, what happened to my ministers? Where did they go? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, they'll but do anything to afraid. they'll do you anything cannot. to make people scared or freak yes. out or whatever. And oh, exactly. But if you're if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, 
you know you carry his fire, you know his word, you know, you know, greater see that is in me, that that thing that's out there, you got to like so, so live it and believe it, you're fine, you know? Well, Terry, what, what is, is there a, an established thing that you're, you're talking about doing something out of your home? Are you guys having a, a certain schedule right now or is it just kind of get a hold of you? Yeah, well, right now it's like uh, appointments. Like okay. I've got an appointment on Wednesday, I believe, to go to Tulare to meet a couple, a uh, husband and wife, mm -hmm. that uh, are requesting deliverance. Okay. So, so if they just need to get a hold of me. I will talk with them, and then we will make arrangements to meet uh, somewhere. And I, I, mean, I never go by my. I mean, I can go by myself, but I'd rather have a team. Yeah. Because, like yeah, I no, said, I don't do exorcisms. I will not do. <laughs> I do not. No, I, I don't have the time. <laughs> like, yeah. like. Uh, Shamrock, he was a he was an amazing evangelist, a tent evangelist. I love that man. And he'd always say, Hey, I just don't have time. I just hit them and run and let the pastors take care of them, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because my call is the evangelist. I'm gonna get you saved, I'm gonna get you free, and uh, whatever I can do, and then let's get you in church so that you can be discipled of and stay that way, you know. Awesome, that's what yeah. it's supposed to be, so right. So it seems like you've got the um, deliverance part of it, and then um, what? What else? I don't want to say service. Min you know, ministry that you have can be towards ministers who are needing some kind of encouragement, some fire. Um, Absolutely. Uh, churches do churches have you come in and, and talk or, or speak? I mean, what? Yes. What should people get a hold of you if they're look? What are they looking for? Yes. Yes. I actually. Uh, my region that God has me in is Fresno South. Okay. I mean, I've been in churches in Visalia, Hanford, Tulare, uh, Kings County, anywhere in Kings County. Um, uh, those areas over there, uh, that's where I'm usually at because the minister, they know me there more than, than, um, than, than my own hometown. I mean, I just know. Uh, but over there, yeah, I, I do. And they get a hold of me. Um, by, they can go and hold me by either my, my Facebook or they can actually get a hold of me, you know, uh, because my, my ministry is called Fire Crew Ministries. Fire and what? Fire Crew. Crew, okay. Fire, like a fire crew, like a, yeah, like fire crew. They can get a hold of me at Fire Crew. Uh, it's actually Terry at firecrewministries.com or info at firecrewministries.com okay either one of those two they can get a hold of me um they can get a hold of me as revivalist terry gonzalez on my facebook okay. um uh, also through instagram um and they can uh they could message me through messenger and say hey because this is what's been happening a lot yeah. I, got, I know so-and-so, they need deliverance. And, you know, so this way I'm able to talk with them and make sure that number one, they want it. Because I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to pull a devil out of somebody <laughs> that doesn't want it. That's an exorcism. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not into that. But they have yeah. to want it. They have to decide, like, I'm tired. I want to get it out because I need their help too, you know. Um, and it makes it a lot easier, quicker, faster, and then they're free. You know? Awesome. So that's, okay. yeah. Well, I, I and really, really enjoy talking to you, Terry. Mm -hmm. I've got to bounce. I actually have a, a dinner I have to get to, but I, oh, I definitely, fine. I want to have you back on. I, there's so much to dive into. Yes, <laughs> so, yes, yes. Um, but I'll, I'll put those links in the description okay. so people can get okay. a hold of you. Um, okay. I, I know the messenger thing. I know, I mean, on Facebook a lot. It's, it's hilarious that people feel way more comfortable in private sometimes and, and you yes. get these messages and stuff. So yes, um, yes. we will do that. Um, any, okay. de any departing fire words you want to speak out before we leave? Um, no, it's just uh, the only thing I want to say out there to you ministers out there. Um, yeah, don't give up because the enemy, that's his plan. He wants to tire you out. Uh, in this season, this is what he's working hard on is tiring out the ministers. Um, making them just give up because if they if they can get you to give up and not work and do what God has called you to do, then He has more people. And you know what? You can't. These are souls. You know, my heart is for. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's 
if it's, uh, you know, if you have to go to, like they say, uh, um, the, the church down the street, you can pull pe people that you see coming out of the churches, you know, hi, how are you? Uh, do you, you know, do you have the fire of God or whatever it is, you just need to make sure that these people are truly saved and that they carry the fire and that they get this, um, the thing is, is that they get hungry for God and they just see souls out there and, and their passion would be for that, for, for saving people because this is a dying world right now and all this stuff's happening with this COVID and all of this stuff, this fear that I'm telling you, a lot of these people are coming in with fear and we're having to pull all that fear out of them, you know, and tell them that, hey, perfect love casts out all fear. So we have to remind them that Jesus is here for them, you know, and that He's the one who's going to help them through all of this. So, but yeah, very important. So thank Man. you again, Nicholas, for having me on. It was awesome. You're welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Jim, Jim had kind of that same, you know, he's got that passion for the, the ministry. You, you started out with that ministry outside the four walls. And Absolutely. So I, I know we've Absolutely. got some local stuff coming up and, and we'll communicate that to everybody. So okay. we're excited. Okay. All right, Terry. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank All you. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.